Well, guys, uh, Justin took us through some deep waters with all of that. And um, we'll be swimming in that. You'll be swimming in that with us as we process that. Um, but we're going we're gonna to shift gears over uh, some news that came out of Sydney, Australia over the last two days. Uh, I don't want to call him an influencer, but I, I'm so quick to run to that word nowadays. But he's a bishop, uh, Bishop Mario Emanuel Yosip, I believe, uh, an Orthodox bishop. He was attacked on a live stream. And the significance of this is because of his platform right now, his audience. But we're going to take a look at this clip. Uh, we're going to censor it on the play, but on the post-production side, just because we don't want to get flagged by YT. But we're going to take a look at this. And then we're going to talk about the Christian response. We'll look at that clip. And then one of the rants that the bishop went on that really sort of catapulted him in the last year. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was in Sydney. And, um, but the notable response to this that we have to talk about um, as we look at the cultural um, warfare we're in the middle of is the next clip, which is the response of Sydney residents, in particular Christian Sydney residents, came out to protest this. Um, Interesting. And so I think 5,000 of them, um, and we want to hear what they were saying. Yeah. Bring, bring him bring out. him out bring him out the guy who attacked the, the bishop um, there were there were reports also all right you can pause it there were reports also that within the um, church that some of the people there took their own ret retribution on the guy that hasn't been confirmed just yet but what's interesting is that the this collision course that uh, these prevailing worldviews are on where yeah, obviously, Christians in the West are feeling that suppression, that opposition, that persecution, that beginning per persecution. But people are starting to respond in such a way where they're saying no more, where, you know, they they were literally trying to get in there. Yeah. Um, and so it's just interesting from the landscape of business as we think about this, because what we're always talking about, you have to choose which side you're on. Yeah. Now, you may you also have to choose how you demonstrate what side you're on. But nonetheless, um, there's a lot going on around us and, and we kind of have to process that uh, as leaders. Yeah. I think people in the, specifically Christians in the West or the people that live on American soil are so naive. Like they genuinely think that the people that are coming to this country have the same shared core values of like, you know, you don't pull a knife out and stab at some stab somebody cause they don't believe your religion. Right. Um, they've never experienced what it's like to be in the middle of, you know, Ramadi, Iraq or something like that, where it it's real every day is life or death and they don't operate from the same playbook. Yeah. And so I think it's just, it's concerning for me as an entrepreneur, as a parent, as a father, um, you know, as a concealed carry holder, you know, I'm, I'm on edge regularly when I'm out and about in the community or going to large public places like I've never been before. And that's a sad state of affairs, but it's a sign of the times of where we're at um, culturally. Right. And um, well, if we, and keep if your head on a swivel, I mean, that's like, don't fall asleep at the wheel. You know, don't think it can't happen to you. I mean, the same stuff can very easily happen to you. The same stuff can easily happen to you. And if, and if there, there's a third clip there of the viral rant, but uh, we don't have to play the full three minutes of it. But when we talk about bringing our beliefs to the public square, um, it's, it's these kind of positions that we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to hold publicly? Yeah. Um, because the consequences of holding them silently are growing greater by the day. So people of the United States of America, don't ever let any fools to come into the white house anymore. If you want to remain as humans with dignity, with respect, you need to come back to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom America has forgotten in recent years. You have introduced laws that are in absolute and complete offense to the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You want to remain the superpower. You want to remain glorious. You want to remain mighty and go against the Lord. You're dreaming. You are dreaming. If America does not come back to you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every law 
that has been passed against the Lord must be revoked, must be wiped, must, must be decimated. And every law introduced in honor, worship and glory of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Otherwise, the Lord will bring America down. It is the Lord, no one else. And let me say this, whether you agree or disagree with love and respect, when America goes, Christians are the number one will be persecuted by the next superpower, which is China. And again, I'm not talking about the Chinese people. I'm talking about the dragon, which is that government of China. So as you can see, um, there's reasons why people want to hurt this man. Yeah, he's um, very outspoken. Very outspoken. And so... We, we have to weigh those consequences as leaders, but we, you know, we share that on the pod today because we can't ignore the things that are happening around us. Uh, well, I, th I think a lot of our listeners listen to this podcast and they aren't speaking up. They aren't being bold about it. And inevitably it shows up on your doorstep, whether you like it or not. So damned if you do, damned if you don't, you might as well have a chance at changing the potential outcome by speaking out about these things. Otherwise, your bet is made and you can lay in it, right. you know? I also right. think that there's some obligations that come from that more than just the obligation to speak out for what's right. And I think about the things that God have, has called me to be, a husband and a father, specifically those two roles. Yeah. Because I am a husband to my wife and a father to my daughters, it is my job to lead our family, to guide my family, and, and to protect them. And so while it is also my obligation to speak out and to stand for what's right, there's an inherent obligation in that, in that I need to be prepared to defend myself because from the slings and arrows that will come for me standing out and speaking for what's right. Because you know what, if I get out and run my mouth and talk about virtue and righteousness and all of that, and I'm exactly on point and I'm saying all the right things and I'm glorifying God and I'm doing what I need to do, but I can't defend myself and the slings and arrows take me down. And then my family is left without a leader, without a husband, without a father then I failed. I haven't done what I need to do to be a true, uh, to be mm. my view of what a Christian is, but also just my view of what I need to do to be the man that I want to be. Yeah. Good. And to me, I, I think that, you know, you, you mentioned it with your concealed carry permit. You know, I, I too, I carry almost everywhere I go. But in addition to that, it, it's being not, it's not just about being ready to, to answer violence with violence. It also comes back to the leadership that we were talking about and talk and when in our the first segment talking about socialism and leading your company, yeah, it's being able to speak to people in a way that they're going to hear you, and whether that's to defuse somebody who wants to attack you, or whether that's to just educate somebody so they don't any longer want to attack you. It, it all rolls into our roles and responsibilities yeah. as as men. Yeah, and I, on the note of concealed carry too, I think everybody thinks that people who concealed carry are simply doing it to defend themselves, and that's couldn't be further from the truth, right? It's to be in a situation where you do not have the ability to defend the greater whole, right? Which would include my family, obviously, but right with the bad guys, he always has the gun, right? right. How many good guys are there with guns, right? right? To, to step up and defend the greater society. And I think that's the, that's where we're at. We've been on this path of radical individualism and what's better for the self for the last call it 20, 30 years. And we're moving out of that and into a time where like, Hey, what's better for us as a society as a whole, right? right? The further away we have gone, the more liberal we have come become as a country, the more ignorant we have become on topics of uh, politics, war, economics, et cetera. And, and those are the things that make us want to embrace something like socialism, right? Because it's, we, we, we've made our own bed. We've walked into it and we only really care about ourselves. We don't right. give a crap about the, the greater whole. We just care about me, 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 me. Yeah. Right. And, and that's the exact opposite of what this country was founded on. Yeah. I, I think one more thing to add to your point of defense is I think another layer of one's ability to defend themselves and others is their character also. Because like I, there's a story that broke a couple months ago of, a couple, a wife in particular, she was involved um, in local government, but they were highly outspoken about things uh, around um, sexualization and gender and all these different things. Well, we turned to find, come to find out behind scenes, her and her husband were having a swinging type of relationship with crazy with another person and we're abusing them. Right. And I think that's one aspect of our defense as well. So you, while you, you, you may need to develop the skills and the training and the relationships to physically be able to, 
to stop a, a, a threat. Um, make sure your character is on point, which is one of the things I've loved about what we do is because, you know, I'm having to reflect on my character while we make certain statements and we do certain things and reflect on how I'm communicating, which is an aspect of your character as well. Um, right. So I think that's that the internal piece of the um, defense that you were talking about. So, so across the board, tightening it up as men, um, ladies too, but right now it's a crisis of men being underprepared and, yeah. and, and out of position for the current battle. 